Hi, how's it going? This is Greg with HowToBuildGames.com, where I'm teaching game design and development with Unity 3D. This is going to be Lesson 5 in our 2D series. If you have not seen the previous lessons, you should start with Lesson 1 um, up here. Lesson 1 in the 2D series, 2D game development. Uh, if you have started but you haven't watched the last lesson, you need to do that. Watch Lesson 4 right here. This is going to pick up where that one left off. But first, let me direct you to the website over at howtobuildgames.com. You come to the website, you fill out the form, and you get access to the source code and art assets when you confirm your subscription. So that's the easy way to do it. But you can also make your own art and follow along typing everything in if you'd prefer to do that. That's fine. So I'm going to switch back over to Unity now, and we're going to look at where we left off with Lesson 4. Uh, falling things and bucket catching. It's not awful, um, but it, it doesn't look very professional either. It, it's not cohesive. Uh, the artwork is all kind of thrown together. It's a mixed match of clip art and pictures. Um, I'm not an artist, so none of the colors and things coordinate. So uh, I just wanted things to look more professional. So I found a neat website over here at kenny.nl, as you can see right there. This guy has a whole ton of artwork you can use if you go to his website and go to assets. It's all free. They're all licensed CC0, so you can use them in personal and commercial projects. You just click on one of these to download the zip file, or you can also go to the home page and look for this particular entry where it says donate to Kenny. If you click that, that'll take you to his page. You can purchase everything he's done for a dollar or more and get all of it, even stuff that's not uh, currently on the website and get it all in one big zip file. So it's good to encourage guys like this to keep doing things so I'd encourage you, uh, if you want some good-looking artwork for your games, check out his site. Again, his main site is k-e-n-n-e-y dot n-l, and that's that. So let's go ahead and get the brief rundown of what we're going to build is this. So watch over here. Got a bucket. Now what you'll see is of course that well things are moving a little bit differently and they're also spinning around um, using the new artwork new background new everything I think it looks a lot more professional um, it's also a lot harder if you'll notice over here things are th jumping up, getting thrown uh, into the air first before they come down which kinda helps add to the chaos of it and you know maybe you want that maybe you don't that's okay I'm going to show you how to do it we're literally only changing two lines of code well maybe we'll make a couple of toggle buttons in there as well but very little code in this one it's mostly going to be about updating the art assets um, properly so let's start by deleting all of that now that I showed you what we had now we're going to build it so we're going to take our scene four. We're going to hit Control D or Command D on the Mac to duplicate it. I'm going to click in here to rename it. We're going to call it um, Part Five Lesson 2D. This will be the very beginning of it. Click on it. Look up here just to make sure Part Five Lesson 2D that it's got the right thing. So now, if you hit play, it is identical to what we had before, which is where we want to start. So let's start with pulling in uh, the art assets now I've added one extra file here called preview and I'll show you why in a moment so we got this new art folder or art new show an explorer open that up put that over here switch over to my new artwork I'm just gonna copy all that and paste it into here using standard Windows control C control V or of course Mac command C command V. Having done that, I click back in Unity, 
What you'll want to notice is that all of these have a little triangle next to them, or they should. If you click the triangle, you see a sprite below it. That's good. If you do not see that little triangle, chances are very good that your graphic got imported as a texture. You'll notice for texture types, there's no little triangle over here, and it's not a sprite, more importantly. So to fix that, you click on the image, texture type to sprite, and hit apply. Then you'll see the little down arrow that lets you access the actual sprite. Then you're in pretty good shape. So let's start with the objects. We've got a piranha, a snail, a spider, and a spinner. I'm going to edit the colliders on these. I'm going to do a couple of them so you get a good idea of what we're doing. So I'm going to click in Art Assets, drag it up into here. Uh, that is way too small. I'm going to hit F to zoom in on it. But uh, from having done this, I still know that's way too small. And I can see over here that's too small. So I'm going to change the scale to 3 by 3. That's a little better. Now as I zoom in, I'm going to maybe rotate this thing 90 degrees, something like that. Now we add the components. We add the rigid body to make it fall. And we add the polygon collider to make it collide with things. Now this green outline is the polygon collider. And that shows what is going to collide with different things. So if the bucket hit right here, it wouldn't go into that little space. It would just hit on this edge and fall off. And that's really not that big of a deal. But I'm going to show you how to get more specific anyway in case you want to, in case it is a bigger deal. Uh, because you don't want to frustrate your players. You know, if the collider was really huge and you had intricate parts that were, you know, trying to collide, the spider you'll see in a minute is a little more detailed. You don't want to frustrate your players. So what we're going to do with it clicked over here, we've got our rigid body and polygon collider. I'm going to hold down shift and as I move over the vertices of the polygon collider you see them light up green. Now if you hold down control they show up red. If you click one of those that will delete it. I'll go ahead and do that just to demonstrate something. Now I'm going to hold down shift to move them around. Um, and what you'll find is that if there's enough room between them, you'll get the possibility of an extra vertex in there. And so now you can actually add one. So here, there's not enough space for me to add one. So I'm either going to be moving one point or the other one. But over here, right in the middle, there is enough space it, briefly. What you can do, you can just like if, if you really want to make an extra vertex somewhere where there's not one. You can pull that real big, make your extra vertex, and then pull it back down. So in this case, now I've made one I don't need. So I'm going to hold down Control, which makes it red, and delete that. Uh, this area, probably don't need to, to tweak that. Um, this area, do it like that. And again, this doesn't have to be real exact. You just want it to follow the basic idea. Now right there, it's moving the sprite around. That's not a big deal. That's going to happen, especially if you've got some up in the corners. Um, I don't need that extra one, so I'm going to delete that, which tighten that up. You don't need it to be super exact, but you don't want a whole bunch of crazy extra ones either. Oh, let me stretch this out, make an extra one up here for the edge of that. Nope, actually didn't need that at all. Delete that. All right. So now as I hold down shift and move my mouse around, I can kind of see where things are. It doesn't have to be super tight around the object, but you want to remove extra points because extra points mean performance. Um, in this case, I think I'm going to delete that one there because that really doesn't make any difference. And so now we've got a good collider that follows the shape of the object pretty well. Um, tweak that. Okay. I think we're in good shape now because I accidentally moved some pieces of this as I was uh, holding down shift trying to edit things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to sprite or to the scale and change that to 3 and 3. So now it's exactly like we had it before. Now what I'm going to do, since this is basically what we want, I'm going to take that. I made a folder over here called Prefabs New. I'm going to take the piranha and drag it in there. So now 
that is a new prefab that we can use within the game. Having done that, I'm going to click that to disable that. And I'm going to go back to artwork. And now let's do the spider because that's also kind of complicated. Um, I'm going to move him to a size of 3x3. Three three. I'm going to add the rigid body and polygon collider. Now this guy needs a little more work. Um, the the engine does the best job that it can trying to collide the polygons and typically it does a very good job when you've got objects that are real small sometimes it'll get a little bit confused um, and so I'm gonna move some of these polygons around I'm gonna delete a couple just to make sure that we've got a good clean mesh that we're working with because you don't want you don't want a big mess within there and so you see as it's as I move around um, it's going to create extra points as needed. That's good. That's fine. Um, we want one there. We want one there. I guess right there. Um, we don't really need one there because that's going to be a straight line. I do want to add one over here and then over here. See how I did that? Um, and I'm, again, I'm holding down shift in the middle to make that extra spot. Uh, make that extra point appear. Uh, let's see, okay, I, I'm going to delete that one so that, well, uh, let's see, I'm going to move this around so I can get an extra point in there. So again, making that bigger just to get the extra point um, prompt in there. Don't need, don't need all that stuff. So let's delete that, delete that, delete that. I'm doing deleting those by holding down control as I move over the points. So we do have a little gap in there. Um, that moves in there. Let's see. Now we want to hold down shift. All right. And these are in pretty good shape. I can't quite see the edge of that. But I know he's back there. So what I'm going to do here is delete that right now we got that delete that so I'm going to move that in a little bit and move that in move that in then well, I guess I'll make another one okay well see it's good that I moved it out. Sometimes you, it gets hidden back there, so that's important. Um, I want to make an extra one here. Actually, probably just move that around. So the goal in all this is just to get a pretty good outline of what you're trying to work with. Um, I could pull this in there, but that's really not the chances of anything hitting in there because it's so small or really low. You want to make sure that you've got the minimum amount of vertices or points that you can get by with and still have still have something that follows the shape of your model pretty accurately. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, again, I'm going to go back over here just to reset the scale so that it's good with everything else. And now, with this one being finished, I'm going to also drag him to the prefabs new folder. So now I got Piranha Prefab, Spider Prefab. With that, turn that guy off. Now these last two I will do quickly. Um, I'm not going to commentate on them like I did before, but you'll see me doing the same stuff.
Yeah, it looks good. Reset that. Now he's good to go. Drag him into prefabs. And lastly, the spinner. Really, for him, we're just going to use a circle collider. Um, you don't want to use a polygon collider if you don't have to, because polygon colliders take up more computing power to process. If you're on mobile, that's a big deal. Otherwise, it's not. So, on a PC, it really doesn't make that much difference. You can kind of tweak the radius here if you'd like, although, again, we're dealing with such small values. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'll probably just leave it at the default where it was. So with that guy done and scaled to 3 and 3 like the others, drag him into the prefabs and then we're done with our prefabs. So the next thing I want to do is change the background. So I've got this preview picture that Kenny made. I'm going to drag that into the window just so I can kind of see it, and that shows, as I pan around, um, the different artwork. They've got, you know, they've all got a similar palette. Uh, they they go nicely on this blue background. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our camera's background to this blue background. So click on the camera object, click little eyedropper, which will pick the color of what we're doing, and say, I want that blue right there. And Bam, just like that, now the camera background is blue. So now uh, these objects are going to fit better with the background. And now we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to click on the, the sprite over here and just delete it because we don't need that in our scene anymore. Now the only thing left to change out is the bucket. I have made a bucket that uh, uses some of the colors and, and styles from the other artwork because he didn't have a bucket. So I'm going to pick these by uh, control clicking them, turn them on, move them around a little bit just so I've got kind of a point of reference for the size of the bucket. They're a little bigger than the bucket, but we're going to fix that. So I'm going to click on the bucket over here to bring it up. The bottom of it is attached to this main bucket 2D object. Clicking on the sprite here will bring it up over there. That's not the part that we want, so I'm actually just going to drag this one into that one. And just like that, it gets changed. Then I'm going to go to the bucket top and do the same thing. I'm not going to click on that, though, because I want to keep it in the Art New section. Click and drag the sprite, and look at that. Just like that, it's replaced. Now, what's not replaced is the colliders. As you can see, they are too small for what we've got, but that's easily fixed as well. So let's take the left wall, move it over, hit an R to scale up, scale it up, W to move it around, and that's probably pretty good. Right wall, um, well, you know what, let's just take the left wall, Control D to duplicate it, call it the right wall, move it over, realign it. I'm just using keyboard shortcuts. You can also click on these up here. And E is the rotating keyboard shortcut so that W, E, and R are move, rotate, and scale for W, E, R so they're in a row just like you have move, rotate, scale. So now we're in better shape. I'm going to tweak that right wall just a little bit more, move it back. Then we've got the floor. I'm just going to hit R to scale that up some, move it down. And like before, doesn't have to be perfect. And really, this bucket floor will probably never get hit um, because when things hit this, they're going to disappear but it's good to cover your bases. It's actually also good to not have overlapping colliders if you can help it. Sometimes that causes an issue, sometimes it doesn't. It's, but it's better to... I try to do everything as optimized as possible within reason, 
so it's better to not have overlapping colliders if you can help it because that can be a performance issue sometimes. Now I'm going to take the bucket trigger, make that a little bit bigger so that it kind of covers the majority of the bucket. Click on the bucket, look at everything. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to move that down just a little bit. So, hey, there's our new bucket. And it's got the same kinds of tones. Um, everything fits. Or everything's already looking a lot better, I think. So, uh, if we want to hit play and just kind of watch everything fall down, we can. I'm going to click and drag in the window to move those. Position this so that some will be in, some will be out. Hit play just to kind of try it out. And, yeah, there we go. And then our regular spawner is over here spawning regular things uh, from the game. All the movement stuff still works. These work uh, same with the bucket as they did before. Um, so things are getting lost in the side um, and hitting the collider inside. But And we could fix that by making longer, uh, thicker collider walls, but that's not our goal right now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. So we know these things work. I'm going to go ahead and control select all of them again, turn them off. Then in our spawner, we've got our old elements. And remember, we click on those and it lights them up in the prefab section over here. Well, we don't want that anymore. We want prefabs new. So I'm going to replace them one by one. Piranha, snail, spider, and spinner. So because everything is a little bit bigger, I want to cut down the uh, time between spawns a little bit. So half a second, maybe that's too much. Uh, I think that works. Yeah, that's a little fast. And so everything works pretty well now. Um, everything's falling more or less like it should. Things are colliding more or less like they should. If I hit on the edges, you see things falling in. That's good. Um, now one thing you may notice, all these things are just dropping straight down, which is not very interesting at all. Um, so the two lines of code we're going to do will give them a little bit of spin so that they're rotating around when they come down. And we'll actually kind of throw it up a little bit in the air from the spawner, uh, which will also just make it a little more interesting in, in gameplay and visually to some degree. So let's go ahead and do that. Stop the game. We are, of course, going into the spawner code, the spawn multiple objects. So I'm going to double click that, bring up mono develop. So just to refresh, we're picking a random object. We are spawning one of those objects in this line of code. And then in this line of code, we are saying give the new object the position of the object that is spawning it. Because there's no uh, other game object reference here and just transform.position it's using whatever object this script is attached to. So I'm going to make a couple spaces. I'm going to paste in the code that I typed earlier and explain what these do one at a time. So remember the rigid body is what makes it actually fall and we're going to add some force that 0, 400, that just means 0 in the horizontal and 400 in the vertical, basically. Um, and so that's going to kick it up just a little bit. Not a tremendous amount, but some. But just enough to make it a little more interesting. Let's go ahead and save that. Switch back over to Unity and see how that changes things. I hit play. Now, over here, you see things kind of show up. Yep. It's already a little more interesting. If you watch over here, this is where the you kind of get a better idea. It's throwing them up in the air first. And as a result, it's changing the way that they fall a little bit. Some of them are interacting as they hit one another and things like that. But a lot of them are still dropping just, you know, straight down. And I guess spiders do that, but, you know, flying piranha don't, I would think. So let's go ahead and stop that. Alt tab back over to the code and remove this second line. Add torque. Torque is a um, 
basically a rotation. And so we're saying we want to we want to throw it some random rotation with a force of between negative 90, which would rotate it one way, and 90, which would rotate it the other. So basically, it's just going to give it a random spin, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Doesn't matter. We don't care. And that's what that's going to do. Now, if you want to see more about these, copy that, and you can go to open a new tab, go to Google, pull that up, the script reference. You want C sharp because that's what we're doing. Apply a force to the rigid body. It's separated as the X and Y because it's 2D, there is no Z, and the larger the mass, the greater the force required. We haven't changed the mass, so that's not that big of a deal. Um, also down here, along with rigid body add force related, is rigid body add torque, and so that kind of gives you an idea of what it's doing, and so in 2D, it can only rotate in one axis, and so torque is a float rather than a vector. And so that adds torque at the middle. So anyway, uh, that's you know fun reading if you want to do that. What's important for us is that the code is there, saved out. Go back over here. That's going to recompile everything. And then hit play again. Now watch what we've got. So now they're all moving. They're all spinning. It gets much more interesting and honestly um, harder. Um, because things are way more random, way more kind of wacky. And if you look over here and you see how things are getting thrown up in the air, they're spawning, they're bouncing. Um, you know, some of them have a lot of spin, some of them have a little bit, some of them have a little bit the other way. So it just makes for a more interesting game. That one had really slow spin. So this is what we're going towards. Um, this is, you know, a reasonably playable game. It looks pretty good. Um, it plays pretty well. Nothing too fancy, but, you know, I've seen worse. So, let's go ahead and stop that. Now, one thing a lot of people have asked about is, will we make uh, mobile controllers? The answer is yes. I will, before this 2D series is done, I will show you how to take this and put in a mobile control option, maybe two. I'll probably do it on Android because uh, I'm on my PC. It's basically the same way whether you're doing Android or iOS, more or less. Uh, Unity has some built-in stuff that works well. So we will get to that, not this lesson. This lesson is done. I wanted to show you how to change out the artwork and add a little bit of uh, interest to the things that are dropping. I think we've done that. Make sure you've saved your scene. And as always, if you go to howtobuildgames.com, sign up on the email list, you get the art assets and the source code. That is how you get the art assets I'm using. If you want to get the scene files and the packages and things. If you want to go to Kenny.nl and download stuff yourself, you should. Um, but if you want to get the Unity stuff, as I've done it, then signing up on the email list, then you get an email that says, this is the email with the good stuff, and that's where you start. That'll take you to a, a page and that has the code on it. I am working on a new website. It will look better than this. It actually looks very nice, but it's still coming soon. So, anyway, I'm Greg with HowToBuildGames.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.